G'day guys, my name is Michael from the Instagram account Red Sand Rookies and today I'm putting a video together to talk about our vehicle that we used to go around Australia with. So what this car is, is a 2007 120 Prado. Uh, it's the turbo diesel option, the 3 litre 1KD engine. And basically what I wanted to do was put a video together to show that you don't really need the biggest and the best vehicle to go around Australia with. Um, there's people out there that are doing it with much bigger and much more capable vehicles than what this one is, but there's also people doing it with much less than what we've got. So we use this car to tow our camper trailer around, and so far it's been brilliant. It's really got us everywhere we wanted to go. We're currently in the Northern Territory at the moment, just on our way out to Arnhem Land, and so far so good. Everything's been running quite smoothly, so I've got no complaints about this car, but basically this car cost us around twenty twenty one thousand dollars um, and that was during COVID times as well so it's probably a little bit inflated um, and since then we've sort of built it up to do what we want it to do and to get us around Australia so I'll take you through a couple of the mods that we've done just to make it reliable and a little bit more capable so yeah we'll jump into that right now so let's talk about some of the modifications that we've done to this vehicle to take it around Australia and keeping in mind that the way that we did it was budget friendly we're not traveling with huge amounts of money behind us you know we're doing things on a budget so we didn't want anything too expensive we just wanted to make things reliable and we wanted it to get us to where we where we wanted it to go so genuine uh, Toyota bull bar look it's not great it's it's actually terrible so if you're looking to put one of these on your car I would suggest not go straight for a steel bull bar um, I think many people would already already know that, so I won't go into too much detail. The steady uh, seven-inch spotlights, uh, they look, they're great. They they do light up the road. They do provide us with a bit of extra safety when driving at nighttime. So that's uh, that's great for us. Uh, the GME 6.6 um, dBi uh, antenna, that was one thing that we put on uh, just to obviously help us communicate with other people on the road. Um, it's probably a must if you're driving through the Pilbara uh, from our perspective. So I'll just uh, quickly touch on the tires that we've got on this vehicle. Uh, these are the Falcon Wild Peak All Terrains. Uh, they are 265 by 65 R17s. So basically the same size as the standard tires that come on the Toyota Prados. Um, they have been great. They've actually been really, really good tires. Should I have gone for one size up? Probably. But at the time, I was, yeah, didn't have a lot of money. So the car hadn't been modded that much. It wasn't lifted at the time. So I was just, I just wanted a little bit more of an aggressive tire. Uh, when these do go bold, I probably will go one size up uh, just to get a little bit of extra lift. But to be honest, I've been driving with them for just over 40,000 Ks and they've been a great tire. I've, I've, we've taken them on the gib. We've taken them um, lots of dirt tracks, four wheel drive tracks, um, and they've got, you know, plenty of uh, plenty of grip to get us to where we need to go. No, it's not a mud terrain tire, but that's not what I wanted. Um, they're really quiet, and they're not that expensive. I think I got the set of four for eleven hundred bucks or something at the time. So yeah, they've been a really good tire, and I would probably get them again, just one size up. I think. All right, so coming around the other side of the vehicle, uh, I've got a couple extra mods that we've done. These are just some cheap towing mirrors that we got off, I um, can't even remember the website now, but they're San Hema. Uh, so they look like the Clearview ones, but they are absolutely not. And they're about a quarter of the price. And they've been great. They've been, uh, honestly been really good. They do pull out. So when you are towing, you can see past the trailer, um, but they, they do work really well. And they've copped an absolute beating on the tracks. So I'm quite impressed with the way that they've gone. We did put the Safari Snorkel on. It has made a difference and we probably needed it once or twice up in the Kimberley, uh, just going through some water crossings. Um, but another thing I've noticed is that the, the air temperature coming through the snorkel does seem to be a little bit uh, lower than what it would be if it was picking up the air from underneath the vehicle. So from my perspective, um, cooler air going into the engine is, uh, is better. Um, so just making that, that one to two degrees difference uh, coming through the snorkel it was definitely worth it for me um, and I'm quite happy that I got it and plus it looks cool and sounds good so
What we've got underneath uh, suspension wires is Old Man Emu, just a two inch lift. They are rated in the rears, but all they basically do is just give the car a little bit of a lift. But like I was saying before, what I'd really like to do is obviously get some bigger tires in there so that it does lift the belly off the ground. Um, but the, the two inch lift has saved us from a couple of larger than, uh, larger than normal rocks. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. And yeah, again, the two inch lift in the rears, what we've done is we've put some airbags in for, for, for towing our camper trailer. I think this has made a, quite a big difference for us because the, the, the rear end in these 120 Prados does seem to sag quite a bit. Um, so what I've done is just installed the, uh, uh, I think it's poly, Polyman, Polyman uh, airbags in the rear just so that it does pick up the back end uh, so it doesn't sag too much when the trailer's on the back. So. All right, let's touch on a couple of the modifications that I made to the inside of the Prado. Nothing serious in all honesty, um, just really a couple of things to um, help us get by. Um, the EVC throttle controller has been great for towing, uh, really, really makes the car more responsive uh, when it's got the trailer on the back, um, and also really good for doing any sort of low range driving, rock crawling and all that sort of thing. Um, it really just, you can either really dial up or dampen the, the throttle response, uh, which has been great. Uh, the scan gauge too, this has been a really good addition uh, when we've had a couple of uh, instances when the engine light has come on. Um, basically what it does, is it, it'll just tell you what the code is and you can take that code to a mechanic and they'll tell you exactly what that problem is and whether it's uh, whether it needs immediate attention or whether you can just continue to drive with it. It also just helps to identify the problem with the mechanic. So if you do want to get something fixed, you can just tell them the code and they'll know exactly what needs to be fixed with the, with the vehicle. Um, I've recently put Apple CarPlay in uh, that's been a huge addition because obviously this is a 2007 vehicle so uh, the mod cons that it did have weren't that great uh, so this has sort of brought it into the 21st century which has been nice um, we've got the GME XRS uh, 2A radio which has been really great and really handy when uh, driving on the major highways communicating with other caravanners or communicating with truckies uh, makes overtaking a heck of a lot safer in the, in the Pilbara that's for sure um, so would highly, highly recommend having one of these if you don't have one already. Lastly, the Red Arc brake controller. This was in there from the previous owner actually, but this has been obviously handy when towing a brake trailer. Uh, it's a legal requirement that you need to have one of these in your vehicle. Uh, so it was great that we've got this one in there. Uh, it is the older model. You see a lot of these uh, newer models have just got a little dial on, uh, on, on one of these switch panels, but this is one of the old school ones. Um, last thing that I had was the black duck seat covers. These have been really good. Um, I got these second hand on Marketplace for I think 200 bucks for the, the front two seats. Um, so I'm really happy with the way that they're performing. Uh, they just help keep the seats clean um, and help, help keep all the dirt off. Um, aside from that, it's just a standard Toyota dash mat. Some storage here from, um, I believe, AOS Swags. I could be wrong. Um, and everything else in the vehicle is pretty much standard. So yeah. All right, so jumping into the back of the Prado, um, what we've got here is just a crash pad wheel bag. Um, basically, we use this for storing a lot of firewood um, when we're just driving through tracks and we, you know, spot something that's um, be good to use for firewood, cut it down and just chuck it on here. It keeps the inside of the car nice and clean um, and yeah, any bugs or anything just obviously stay in the wheel bag. So um, this is what life is like on the road for us. We have quite a bit of stuff in the back of the car, um, but that's because our camper trailer doesn't really hold too much. Um, and we've also had to do some rearranging because we're actually, uh, we've got another passenger coming with us for a little bit tomorrow out to Nullaboy, but that's a different story. So uh, in the back end of the Prado, I've just got the real cheap Titan drawers. Uh, have they been great? Yeah, they're okay. They've done the job. Uh, they do rattle loose every now and then. I just have to get in there and tighten them. But uh, for the price, couldn't really go wrong. Um, for my next car, when I get a, a different vehicle that you know I'm going to keep longer, yeah, I probably will put some uh, better drawers in. But for now, they've sort of done the job. Uh, I've got the 47 liter Mike Coleman just straight fridge freezer, uh, single zone. Um, we basically use this as a drinks fridge, um, and it's probably a little bit more stacked up in here than what it usually would be. Uh, when we're traveling on the road and it's probably easy to, to get to um, but for the time being there's just heaps of stuff in there um, K on table this thing's actually been really really good uh, drops down like this uh, and I'm sure many of you have seen or many of you that 
do have Prados probably would have seen that they are like a really strong, nice, sturdy table. Um, and then we've got the steel cage here, just to store stuff behind, little bottle opener on the side. Um, really good for just like, you know, overnight stays with the swag. You can use it to cook or prep food or whatever you're doing. Um, and it's also just a, a really good workbench. Pull over the side of the road if you need to fix something. You can just use that as a bit of a bit of a bench to, to fix things. So um, yeah, really simple setup. I've got a 20 liter jerry can in the back that I've just sort of made my own sort of little gravity fed water system. Uh, can't get to it at the moment. Maybe I'll do it in, in another video, but um, yeah. Solar screens, we've got the full tour rig for the solar screens all the way around. I've found that they have been really, really helpful, especially for this fridge. It's just keeping the ambient temperature in the back of the car down. It just doesn't draw as much power and it seems to be seems to be enjoying that quite a bit uh, it also it's also more for privacy like people can't see anything that we've got in the back of the car um, not that we really carry anything that's you know valuable but it's just uh, peace of mind for us that people can't see into the back of the car uh, when we're when we're not with it so yeah all right so let's talk about what's under the bonnet of this car so as mentioned before, but this is the three liter uh, turbo diesel uh, 1KD. Uh, it's making 410 newton meters, or probably was making 410 newton meters when it was new, and 127 kilowatts. Uh, it's an, an extremely popular engine here in Australia. So I guess that was one of the reasons why I chose it is just because the, uh, the availability of parts, particularly in remote areas, was a big, ticket item for me uh, just looking for an engine that you could get parts for pretty much anywhere and particularly up in the Pilbara and, and remote parts of the Kimberley um, this engine is an extremely uh, popular choice for mining vehicles so yeah that is one of the reasons uh, to drive this car you know it's a turbo diesel it's not going to blow your mind but at the end of the day it does get us to where we need to go and it tows our camper trailer at roughly 1.6 tons pretty easy so in terms of fuel economy uh realistically driving around town uh this thing will get probably about eight liters per hundred every day of the week um and towing the camper trailer i reckon we're sitting at about 11 11 and a half maybe um so for me that was great that that it's just a it's a super economical engine it's got enough power for what we need it to do so that's why i like it so a couple of reliability issues with this engine despite its popularity uh the injectors or the injector seats are known to be faulty and what that means is basically soot from the engine gets blown past the injectors and goes gets uh put into your into your engine's oil basically and will basically block your engine pickup and will start the engine of oil and what that does to the car is it will crack pistons. So the second side to that problem is just the fact that it, they do have relatively weak pistons. Um, so therefore, you just need to be mindful of that and obviously not push them too hard. At the end of the day, they are a four-cylinder diesel. You know, you, you can't expect huge things. People have been pushing big power out of these engines, but uh, I chose to keep it stock um, and just to keep it reliable. So... The injectors have been done on this car. They've been done at 265,000 kilometers. I also did a an EGR clean, not myself, but I took it to a, a um, Perth diesel specialist um, and they did the EGR clean out um, because that's known to get carbon buildup and the like. Um, since doing that, the engine runs like new. Honestly, it, it changes the way that it drives completely. Um, it's quieter, it's smoother and just just so much better better fuel economy too so all these things need to be considered when you're uh if you do own one of these engines um is just yeah don't expect too much don't expect unrealistic power um and just look after them um i service it every five thousand kilometers um with just good genuine oils and just make sure everything's in in working order aside from that uh, there's a second battery set up for to run the fridge in the back um and aside from that, everything else is pretty stock standard. So top tip from us is just keep it standard and keep it reliable and um, just keep changing the oil and it won't let you down. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this car. We'll start with the pros. The biggest thing for me was the fuel tank. Uh, the 180 liters of diesel on board uh, is just a massive win. 
and we find that we seem to be getting around 13, 1300 kilometers, 13 to 1400 kilometers out of a fill when towing the camper trailer on the back uh, and about 16 to 1800 around town. So that is a huge pro for me. Uh, and I think, I could be wrong, but I think that it is the biggest um, factory fitted fuel tank out of any car that's come to Australia uh, ever. So that's a huge, huge plus. Uh, the second is just parts are so readily available, particularly with this engine in it. You can pretty much get parts anywhere you go around Australia, even in remote parts of uh, remote parts of WA or anywhere that you're traveling really through, through Australia, you'll be able to find 1KD engine parts um, and just generic Prado parts. So that's another huge, huge pro for me. Um, it drives really well, despite it's 300,000 kilometers on the clock. Uh, it really does drive quite well. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with the way that it, that, it, that it does drive. One other pro, I guess, or the last pro that I want to talk about is just it's, um, it's surprising capability uh, to really to do what it does. It's, it's handled some, some toughish tracks, you know, not huge tracks, but it's done, it's done a lot of things that I didn't think it'd be able to do. And um, it's taken us places that um, I didn't think that we'd get to. Um, and even with a two inch lift and the relatively standard size tires, um, it's actually, it's done us really well. So I'm really happy with the way that, really happy with the way that it performs. And yeah. All right, so let's talk about a couple of the cons with this vehicle. Um, it is getting a little bit old and it is getting a little bit up there in the kilometers. Um, it's not exactly the best towing vehicle. Uh, and that's probably our fault. We didn't really plan to tow uh, before I bought this car, um, but it's just ended up being that way now that we're doing our trip around Australia. But you know what? It's doing it pretty well. So I can't be that upset with it. Space is probably another issue. They're not that big inside. Um, the 150 Prados are definitely a lot bigger inside, but it's also a much bigger vehicle. So um, you gotta pick and choose what you want to go around Australia, I guess. All right guys, well, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that you liked this video and I hope that you learned something about um, running a relatively cheap vehicle on the road, traveling around Australia. Um, I hope that this inspires you to get out there and you know go out and see this uh, amazing country that we live in. But if you liked what you saw, you can follow us on Instagram at Red Sand Rookies. You can see where we're at. Uh, we're currently in the Northern Territory. We've been living up here for a year and we're on our way across to Queensland and back around to Western Australia. So you can follow our travels there um, or you can like and subscribe this video and share it with your mates if you learned something. Great. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.